say good morning, whether it's about 6 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning or prime time. And, although 6 o'clock in the morning is prime time and 2 o'clock, uh, that's our prime time, but it's really prime time in Hawaii and California. I want to, uh, I just want to say that if I, if I listed some of the people you're going to meet today, we'd occupy the whole hour with names. We're going to meet one of the funny stars of Beyond Therapy, the leading lady of uh, Amadeus. And I'm going to ask David Fry. If I, if, I, if I say the name Jay Leno, what's your flash reaction for uh, Jay Leno? Laughs. That's Big what laughs. counts. He's one of, the, one of the very best new comedians around. Ladies and gentlemen, the young uh, impressionist alongside me, the humorist, I guess, who's the forerunner of what's happening today in show business. And this young man began it all. And his name is David Fry, and I think it's very hard for anybody to follow in his uh, footsteps or laugh steps and whatever, uh, or voice steps, and whenever David is in town. Uh, well, we... I'm, at, I'm at the, uh, if I may tell you, listeners, I'm at the top of the gate this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Uh, this is where I started out back in 1965, uh, and uh, it's a very, very active area down in the village there. And I'll be there with a singer, Patrick Jude. I don't know if you... You know. kidding? He's been here a hundred times. He's yeah, fabulous. Right? Yes, he's great. And, and uh, besides being fabulous, he's good, too. You yeah, know? that's right. Uh, and uh, so I hope your people will come out and catch the show. My guest... Now, I want to write this down so I... You know, sometimes I hear people say things and I forget. Now, tell me the schedule one more time. Top of the gate. Which is located... Which is the village gate. Right. Located upstairs. And uh, the shows on Friday are at 10.30. And Saturday, we do one show at midnight, the, the bewitching hour. Top of the Village Gate weekends. Right. Until? All through June. All through June. All through June. Weekends through June. Right. David Fry. My guest is political uh, jabber number one. So, David, you know. We, we I, was just, I, yeah. I was just thinking, right. if, since being an impersonator, if I was lucky enough to have some famous people sitting here, right. and they might be good enough to recommend or suggest coming down to the top of the gate to catch my act, right. maybe Rex Reed, who's the foremost uh, critic in New York City, might say something nice. Uh, this is Rex Reed, uh, the foremost critic in New York City, and I just want to say, and I want to recommend David Fry because I think he's just a remarkable impressionist. And I really think everyone should catch his act at the top of the gate this weekend. And I'm sure that my good friend who gets no respect, Rodney Dangerfield, will agree with me on that. Hey, I'll tell you the truth. I go along with that. You know what I mean? I mean, Rex, you know, you're right. You know what I mean? Hey, I've seen him. You know, he moves. You know what I mean? Great impressions, you know? Not as funny as me or Jay Leno, you know, but, but good, you know? Good. <laughs> Give him one of these, you know, Don't forget, give him one of these, you know. I'll tell you the truth. I got no Hey, that's all right. Hey, help, help, Joe. Hold it, Joe. Help, help. That's important. Help, 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 help. I'm dying. Oh, I got a heart attack. Help, I'm out of it. We don't have any studio audience, so when you hear somebody applauding, it's our own immediate crew. Oh. My guest is uh, David, David Fry, who was also uh, other people as well. Could you imagine George C. Scott if he recommended me? Mrs. George Scott. <laughs> I just want to invite every... I'm not inviting, I'm ordering. As a former five-star general, I'm ordering everybody in New York and New Jersey. Come down to the gate and see David Fry. I'm not kidding. And you be there. Anyone who isn't there will get your names, numbers, serial numbers, <laughs> right to the Middle East. <laughs> I'm not kidding. David, David. No, who, no, no. David, who, who... David, who might have been... Who might have been the first one ever who impressed you? That you know, in turn, that you impressioned them. But the first impression ever of anybody. Um, uh, probably like all impression is James Cagney. James Cagney, right? Who I still do in my act. But uh, the first uh, impression was Gottfried P. Schmidt, right. who's a long forgotten uh, conservative from Fordham University, a professor there. But I would like to do my Reagan impression. Will you, will you, will you, oh, we oh. got to hear that. Will you ever, though... Uh, I'm going to forget it if I keep talking. Were you ever criticized by anybody for being too lampoonish or too very insulting? Rarely, very rarely. Not funny enough, maybe, but... Not, right. not, Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to lean back with you and watch my favorite man who innovated a whole new world of entertainment named David Fry. David. Oh, here's the president. My fellow Americans, this is Ronald Reagan. I believe... And always have believed, Joe. Yes. I believe. I believe I'm getting tired, Joe. I'm. <laughs> no. I, 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 I'm. I'm liable to snooze off at any moment. Those trips to Europe are killing. 
fancy yak, 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 yak. But let me just say this. Oh, she never stops talking, buying dresses. Wanted to buy uh, all of England, but I'm not going to do it. But I believe and always have believed that every law-abiding citizen in this great, this great land of ours, and this is a great land, it's yours, it's mine, it's not his, but the hell with him. But I believe that every law-abiding citizen in this great land of ours should have the undeniable right to own a handgun and a small atomic bomb. <laughs> Now, on the surface of it, it might seem ridiculous. But then on the surface, I seem ridiculous. But once you get underneath my head, you see a very weary, tired old man. I'm ready to fall. Huh? <laughs> <clears throat> I've got to ask... Uh, oh, well, you got a very I've, nice... we got a nice crew. I've, I've got to ask uh, David, with your facility, with, with your marvelous ability to, to portray all these characters, how about, do you ever think about David Fry, the actor? And I'm serious now, without, without being somebody else, just you being you in, uh, in a movie. Well, let me say this. Yes. As <laughs> the former president. Uh, <laughs> you can talk about acting. I acted. Uh, I kidded a lot of people. Uh, 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 I teased them. I said this. I said that. That doesn't mean you have to be on the stage, Joe, uh, in, in order to, to, to uh, belie people, kid them, say things you don't really mean. Anyone can do that. I did that. I didn't have to star in a movie to do that. Uh, and, and let me also say this. Where am I? Oh, <laughs> let, me, let me just say this. Uh, it's not all over for me yet. Uh, is it, Joe? No. <laughs> let me no. also... No. Uh, no, what? Well, of course. You'll uh, come back. I, I will come back, uh, uh, <laughs> if not as the president. And I am the president. And if I'm not the president, it doesn't rain in Indianapolis. In the summertime. <laughs> did you, David, did you, <clears throat> did you, uh, in between, did you do G uh, Jimmy Carter? Were you at all interested in Jimmy Carter as president? Because he's going to be here pretty soon, you know, with his book. Well, of course, I think every impressionist uh, did an impression of uh, Jimmy Carter. I don't think that there's any doubt about that. And my fellow Americans, it's all over for me, I tell you that. I, I don't care. Really, I don't really count. I'm happy where I am. Uh, thank you so much. Have you done vice presidents? I've done Nelson Rockefeller in heaven. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. I was in heaven before. Now I'm in heaven again. I also do the vice president of the United States of America. This is George Bush. As Golly of, gee, Willikers, don't interrupt me. As of now. I, right. I mean, I'm interrupted by everybody. Reagan, <laughs> Haig, I'm the low man on, on, on the totem pole. But Reagan's a great guy. Sure, I know he's old. I've seen the wires go up his back around his neck. I asked him point black. I said, do you wear a hearing aid? He said, what? But I got to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a bit. Let me hear it for... Uh... Oh, thank you. Don't forget, top of the gate. Top David, of the gate. David, one, one little sentimental gesture for me. One, sure. one old timer. One... One from the uh, Cagney Stewart, the ones that, that we used to love. I mean, you, right. met, uh, you mentioned. This is. This is Jimmy Cagney. <laughs> mm. 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 Oh, I'll tell you one thing. Mm. Ain't easy for a Jewish boy to look like me. Mm. 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 <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the top of the village gate, weekends through June, David Fry, Thank and you. I say it again. A good friend. He doesn't travel the rounds or the circus, but we've got a friendship going that goes back at least... Oh, about 1965. Was at the least two weeks, right? No. <laughs> and this man has sold millions and millions of albums. He invented everything happening today. These words and all with more of what has to be for me, a show of shows as we thank David Fry, the innovator. Crew, how about David? What do you want to say about this? Once in a while, maybe once every couple of years, one new comedian becomes the uh, shining light, sort of captures the uh, public fancy or the public imagination, as they say. And this year, do that, do, do that, do that gesture one more time for the West Coast. And this year is a young man named Jay Leno. 
had an immediate recognition. It's, uh, Boy, I'll tell you, huh? Look at the crew was doing handstands. Do you like? <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, you like David? Well, how about you, uh, David Fry? In I love David Fry. I think he's great. I always liked him because he always he always put that little twist on the impression. You know, I I, I like guys that. I don't like impressions that do friendly impressions. He always, he always gets the people mad at him. That's what right. I like. You know, he gets people going, I don't do that, you know. And right. He always finds that little kind of a twist. I think he's great. I love at him. least he never does something that I think is passe. That, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's doing an I mean. impression yeah. of, of TV talk shows. That's, yeah. that's already passe. When the politicians write your letters telling you how much they enjoy your impression, you're out of show business. Right. <laughs> so, Jay, did it, come, did, it, did, it, did it come easily for you? I mean, so far, the, the, the big breakthrough when, when you felt you were no longer one of the crowd, or was it? Was it this a, is my big breakthrough. I grew up watching this show. Elaborate. Don't stop now. This is true. <laughs> Don't. Is true. You too, right? I sure, called absolutely. my mother last night and I said, I'm doing the Joe Frank. She said, oh, yeah. She lives in Boston. See, they don't get the show in Boston, unfortunately. Right. But she said, oh, good. Well, that's wonderful. Because when we lived in New York, we used to watch you. I was a little kid. <gasps> they don't get us in Boston? I don't think so. I'm going to call up the city call bus. Call up right now. <laughs> you mean I'm banned in Boston? <laughs> you may be banned in Boston. That's, that's true. Horrible. That's true. <laughs> My guest is Jay Leno. You got to tell where you're playing because I want to catch the. I'm end. at Dangerfields this week. Uh, we're there from well, the, it's past the seventh, but the seventh to the nineteenth. Jay, a lot of young comedians want to share the spotlight with you, but I want to. Well, it's too bad, Joe. You know, I got it now, and I'm holding on to it. No, the. Uh, yeah. But but I want you to know first that uh, <laughs> the recognition factor when you walked in here. What's been the big show? The Johnny Carson show or the John Davidson show? Well, you know, it's kind of a combination of a lot of shows. You know. Years ago, I guess, if you went on Ed Sullivan or, right. or, or one of the big shows, you got immediate recognition. But, right. of course, The Tonight Show is, is, is still a big one. But now, so many people work so many different hours, and people are home during the day, and a lot more people are working at night. So it's almost a combination of doing a lot of different shows, really, as opposed to uh, and you, uh, any you, big one. you do work alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no I work. partner. No, no. An audience is nice, certainly. They can play a big, big part. They help a little bit, right? In the production, Never considered a partner. Oh, no, no. No, I... I gotta tell you why I'm getting into this. Last night I was watching a movie on TV with Abbott and Costello, and I said to oh, myself, yeah. and I wonder why all the teams, they're, they're so close, but... But, but you what... know why? It costs so much now. I mean, you go to a club or, yeah. or a job, and you've got to pay a team uh, uh, twice as much. That's and the reason. And if a TV show can get one guy... But let's say they let's say they 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 work cheap. Why 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 did they why, why did Lewis and Martin, Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy? Where, where was their sense of humor? Well, I think comedy's gotten very personal. You know, it's gotten uh, it's like music. Years ago, if you had a good voice, you could make it. Right. Nowadays, to make it, you got to be a singer songwriter, and the songs have to kind of have your point of view or your lifestyle. And it's the same thing with comedy. Comedy is very personal now. A lot of comedians get up and they talk about their relationships with their wives or their girlfriends or their inner feelings, and it's it's themselves, you know. Uh, it's no longer joke, 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 quick air, quick air, quick air. Yeah, I mean, there's still guys that do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. It, right. it, it's just that... But they're the, the older ones. Change. Normally, they're the older ones, right? The ones that... I guess. With the I average guess. age. I mean, I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's just a different style. I, I think where well, somebody wants to say the average age is deceased. The okay. average age is deceased. The boom, one, boom. The ones yeah. who do the old, old, uh, the, the one line. <laughs> yeah. right? The old, old lines like that one. Yes, Joe, exactly. <laughs> Jay, I want you to meet a couple of very, very important Broadway stars. A young lady who is uh, winning more and more nominations and more and more awards, and uh, her name is Susan Lederer. Suzanne. 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 See, I knew that. With a C. We, should, we should have gotten through that. Before. I get that all the time. Really? My, mo my mother should have named me something easier, like Mary, I think. Or Becky. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow uh, Suzanne Lederer yes. is the leading lady in? Amadeus. Amadeus. Absolutely. I'd love you to tell Jay a little bit about the plot, the storyline, and how you connect with the, uh, with what's happening on that stage there. Because um, most people don't know Mozart, they know the name, but they don't Mozart. know... Mozart. Not Mozart. Mozart. Which would you prefer? Mo Mozart. Mozart. Right. We, Mozart. We use Mozart. People don't My know... husband prefers Mozart. Bob, Bob is fine. Bob. Bob. Bob, Bob Mozart. <laughs> Bob, I think he's good. He was a genius, was he not? I think. Hell of a guy. Hell of a guy. You oh. went to school with him, right? What do you want to tell Jay about the play? He might want to see it. Have, have you I seen? Will see it. Have you seen Amadeus? No, I haven't. You must come. I will you see must it. come I and see it. see it. Now is the time. Now, now is well, the time. Well, I'm doing the show right it. now, but when it's over, <laughs> Tonight. I will be there. I will be there. I hear it's terrific. I hear you. It is. It's wonderful. Yeah, I try very hard. We're yes. neighbors. Whereabouts? In real life, yeah. In California. In California. We just found this out a few minutes ago. Yeah. In West LA. In West LA. Really? Yeah. What a nice complexion. How do you say so trim and vibrant? Give us any nutritional. What, what food? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. What, what, what food? Do you, works alone. <laughs> what foods do you avoid? Not what do you like. What do you avoid? What foods do you avoid, Suzanne? Um, I avoid. Uh, let's see. 
Gee, what do I... Beets. Beets? Beets. I avoid beets because I don't <laughs> like... It's not giving up a whole meal. lot, really. I oatmeal. Mean, I avoid oatmeal. Oh, it's and beets are not hard I to avoid. No, yeah. no. I, 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 um, I exercise a lot and I take a lot of vitamins and, and um, that's what I do. I stay healthy. And you work like hard that. in that place. Just avoid I work beets and that's how you show. look great? I mean, just the whipped cream, the Twinkies, that's none it, of that, no. that's fine. That's, but that's just, just keep just away from beets and you're all right. That's a new one, the anti-beet diet. I'll have to... My book my is beats. coming out soon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Beyond Therapy, anybody yet? I have. Do you like it? I, I loved it. I've been doing a pitch for this man's show all week. It's one of the funniest shows I've, I've seen ever. And I wouldn't lie to you, kids. <laughs> it's it's. Fabulous. I've been pitching Amadeus, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah so Jay, my, show, my show was a theatrical experience Jay, and fabulous. And his show was a riot. Of stars. Uh, some it's fascinating closest. people who've been here. And this is Mr. Peter Michael Getz, who does a marvelous job as the therapist. Yes. When you go to Broadway shows, and I don't know whether you should you should take sit down or lie down. There's so many good shows today about about therapy, but this is uh, what's uh, absolutely. How do you how do you do the research for a part? Like, you know, you I've never it? I've never been in therapy. I have. You have. Absolutely. I should talk to you maybe yes. after the show. Probably with the beat problem, I guess. <laughs> yes. It can be beat. Hey, Disgusting. As anyone who avoids beats can't be all bad, huh? But uh, I just uh, I have no idea why I'm playing this. I have no basis. I have no credibility. I should not be in the role. I've never been to a therapist. I don't know any therapists. Uh, it's a complete mistake, but uh, no one knows that. Well, that's so, why he's a good actor. That's the reason. That's very sure. well put. Sure. What's that story? Lawrence Olivier was on a show once, and he said uh, he was talking with some guy, and the guy said, uh, when I play a drunk, I go out and get drunk and come in the next day drunk, and if I'm well, gonna, if I'm going to play a fighter, I go out and I get in a fight and, well, and come in the next day. And once Olivia say, why don't you act? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the same that's thing. very true. Uh -huh. and how about Paul that's Muni when true. he made his movies? He would do a prison movie. He'd go to bed at night with the prison uniform on to just soak in the atmosphere. Right. And <laughs> yeah, that would be good for a romance, I could understand. <laughs> yes, there are certain parts prison, that Prison, I wouldn't care to sleep in prison, but if I was doing a, a love story, that could be very advantageous. Would you, would you prefer New York living to California living or uh, vice versa? Well, I used to live in New York. You know, now I, 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 I must admit I am settled in California. The beach is on the wrong side out there, which takes a little getting used to. But other than that, uh, no, I enjoy it. I come back. I'm bi-coastal, you know, so uh, I guess a lot of people in show so business are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but, you learn uh, that as well. Show Mr. Yeah. Getz, you, move. your home no, base? No, I'm not bi-coastal. Uh, my home base is, is here. I live in Larchmont, New York, actually, just up a little oh, ways. Yeah. Take a train in every day. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I saw you on Broadway as John Barrymore. Oh, you did? I did. Yes. A lot of hair was planted on my head. Right. And hollow Col cheeks. Colleen and I moved Duhurst. fast. Colleen, Colleen Duhurst, Duhurst directed, directed it, yes. that play, Wonderful right. experience. Good chicken wings in, in Buffalo. Good chicken wings? Yes, they have these great chicken wings that you can take. But that's another In Buffalo? I thought you were talking about Colleen. <laughs> yes. Yes. I just want to know, with all the, uh, you know, with psychiatrists, though, like this man, Jay, uh, all the psychiatrists now, they're such uh, targets of all the spoofs, all the, all, the, all the humor. You think the real psychiatrists are ever going to revolt? They're ever going to get up in arms and say, stop, uh, stop putting down all the psychiatrists? I don't think so. Uh, with the exception of Hinckley psychiatrists, <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't know. He's probably the only one having a few problems right now. But. Suzanne? I don't, I don't feel that, that beyond therapy is a put down of, of the psychiatric profession at all, although some people probably could view it that way. I think that anybody who's been seriously in analysis for a number of years has to develop a sense of humor about it. I think that's part of analysis to learn <laughs> to uh, develop your sense of humor about life in general. And it's a larger than, than life takeoff on the whole process. Absolutely. And it makes a lot of sense and it really comes from the heart. Yeah. Like my show does. Like your show does. Like Amadeus <laughs> <my> does. <laughs> I think we should talk about each other's shows. <laughs> yeah. They are recommending each other's shows. I want to add to my panel. I want to tell you that, uh, of course, your company is the American company. So I My didn't... company? My company is the first American company right. ever to play Amadeus, any place in the world. We're very proud of it, and the whole theatrical community is very proud of us having the experience because we finally got rid of the Brits. You play it different <laughs> from the Brits? You play it more physical? We from... do, yes. Right. We added more sex and violence uh, in the American tradition. <laughs> the American tradition. <laughs> so uh, some people say, well, it's about Mozart. It must be a very heavy drama. 
It's um, a, a very earthy drama. It's very, it's very funny. Um, it's very warm and heartfelt. You have a fabulous time coming to see it. It's a true theatrical experience, and we cost just as much as any one of the musicals, which is one of the reasons why they've delayed putting the National Company out for so long. But we're here in New York, and we'll be here at the Broadhurst Theater. Please come and see us. And Me Mr. and Frank Langella, oh, he's heartthrob. Great. He, he was here a hundred times. And Mr. Getz, what's the... I, I saw the rave reviews for this. It's a, it's a hit. Based it's on those. going well, yes. We're, we are at the Brooks Atkinson on 47th. And, uh, what what made you choose this business? Let, let's see, was it like circumstance, or was it was it financial rewards, or like a chance encounter, or what? What was the one reason why you chose acting business? Well, when I was in high school, my brother was in All the Way Home on Broadway in 1960 with Colleen Dewhurst. Mm. Now I remember that experience. Just I, I used to watch from the wings, and then 20 years later, I he's no longer in the business, and I'm with her now, and. Uh, I think she had a tremendous influence. Just the first time I'd ever seen a live performance. And I remember feeling something and then just gradually got into it in school and things. It really wasn't anything. It was very gradual and osmosis kind of slipped into it because I couldn't do really anything else. Now think? the frightening thing is yeah. that I'm committed and what do we do if we fail, if things aren't going well? I don't know what to do with my life. Jay, what is your educated appraisal? You're the therapist. Help right? me out. Can you, know. you type? I can't. <laughs> 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 You got a happy family going? Happy married life, everybody here? Me? Me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, at least it was up until tape time, you know. But <laughs> I'm, I'm time it airs, anything can happen, you know. I met a fella, yeah, I got to tell you this. I met a fella yesterday. He's divorced. His son goes to a school. Where are you from? Great Neck. Would well, you want to hear something? Sure. I think it's Great Neck, someplace on Long Island. Yay! His son goes to a school, and, and, he, and in the school there's only one kid with two parents, and the other 29 kids all divorced, and the one with the two parents is the oddity. One with the two parents, everybody yeah. stares at and yeah. says, this kid is like, he's the leper. He's the one. Right. In the old days, they would stare at the divorced one. Now they stare. Now, how do you, help me analyze that one, Jay. What's, yeah. uh, what's happening in life with, with divorce being so prevalent? Or is that just... Uh... Well, I'll tell you, Joe. <laughs> uh, um, help analyze that, huh? Oh, gee. Gee, I, well, I don't know. I mean... It's terrible. Uh... Suzanne, it's... Uh... I, I think I have a theory about it that... Um... What? Right. You're laughing <laughs> at me. I want to see you get yourself out of this here. <laughs> I'm going to try to make sense. Um, that this is, this is an age of, of self-realization and, and raising your consciousness. Mm. And as a result, people are really thinking about where your emotional commitments are and, and where they're coming from. Stop that. <laughs> okay. Sounds good enough to me. So there's a lot of, a lot of evaluation going on. <laughs> and if something isn't working, people are more likely to say, this isn't working, I wonder why. And to get up and say, well, sure. you know, we'll, we'll try again I mean, we you know, with, with another situation, night. Had perhaps. a couple last night at Dangerfield celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. And how many young couples today can say they just celebrated their 50th wedding really? anniversary? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Peter, Michael, Peter <laughs> how many Michael, any reaction to, on... Today is my 16th wedding anniversary, wow. June 11th, 1966. Goodness. I have two little boys, all going well, but... Uh, and proud of their daddy. Yes. Yesterday would have been my fifth wedding anniversary. Would have been. <laughs> Except? Except, you know. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I've, been married for eight, I've been married for 18 months, and in Hollywood, that's, I think that's golden anniversary. It is, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chase if you want to see a really, thing. really funny show, go to see Beyond Therapy <laughs> at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. It's named after a real man. I'm going to, next that's week, right. by the way, we're going to analyze all the critics. We're going to start seriously uh, with Brooks, well, not Brooks, with, with Clive Barnes in person in this chair on Thursday. Is so that right? Right. right. Then, then we're going to do all the Broadway critics. I think because people always talk about the critics, but you never get to see them. So we're going to do every important Broadway critics. Right the, good idea. That's a great idea. You yeah. like that? Can we bring weapons? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of Thursday. No, Friday. Friday, Clive Barnes. Anyhow, uh, and the other one is uh, Amadeus at Amadeus the, at the Broadhurst Theater on Forty Fourth Street. Lady, I got a big surprise package. People that want to meet Jay Leno. Following these words, as we say to Peter Michael Getz and Suzanne Lederer, you are phenomenally gifted. Person. Thank you so much. Thank Keep up the good work. Thank you. Keep on packing theaters, right? I would like Jay Leno and Ann Burstein and Keith Morris to meet. Uh, Want to go to the Deep South? Deep, deep, deep South right now? <laughs> meet this lady. Sure, why not? Why not? 
Miss Mississippi, right? <laughs> That's right, Miss Hospitality. Miss Hospitality. Yeah. And uh, I want you to meet Jay Leno at Dangerfield. Hello. Hello. Ann Burston, who has written the rabbi on 47th Street. We're going to talk about that. Okay. And that's our traveling correspondent in sports. How are you all, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> so, uh, you get it rolling. I used to be Mr. Rudeness. So I used to have oh, really? <laughs> well, no, I... This, this, this last week was Mississippi Week in New York, right? Yes, sir. We had a grand picnic in the Central Park, and we had watermelon spitting contest, and just the whole works. Good food. How did you do in the watermelons? <laughs> did you participate? I have in that not one? perfected that yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that's not too easy. But what, what are the terms of the contest? How many seeds you spit out, or it, it, see how far? You, oh, the seed. Far? Oh, you just the, spit the, the seed. I thought spitting the whole melon. Most oh, people no, don't. Be a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing about it is, after you spit the seed, you get to eat the watermelon. So it was real nice. This lady's name, one more time, is tell us one more time. Patra Massey, and I'm Miss Hospitality for the state of Mississippi. And how old are you about? I'm 19. Not about, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and your message to the whole countryside out there? I'd like to invite everyone to come visit Mississippi because we have a lot to offer, and you won't really know it until you come and visit. But we really have a who's, lot of good food. Who's got the nerve to ask the big question, how to spell Mississippi, right? <laughs> <laughs> Should I try it? Go ahead. You know how to spell Mississippi? Yes, sir. Try it once. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S is that right? What do we got for it, Joe? <laughs> From Spiegel, over 50,000 gift items. <laughs> I want you to watch a little bit of a movie clip before you go away, okay? okay? This is our sportsman, and I said sports is a billion dollar business. This man is worth two billion dollars. Uh, at least. Right? At least. And his name is Keith Morris, and he is our deputy for Sports Illustrated magazine. Uh, Jay, about sports, I think you're like me. Take it or leave it a little bit. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. But it's big. You can't knock it. It's big. No, no, it's big. It's big, <laughs> Joe. It's bigger than both of us. <laughs> Here to stay. <laughs> Mr. Morris, our film clip today is built around Well, somebody. it's built around one of the very fine pictures on the New York Mets, our beloved Mets, uh, seen here on Channel 9. And, uh, uh, Patra, I think you, while you're in town, go out and see the Mets play. And uh, you'll see this gentleman most likely when he comes in as a reliever. And His name is Neil Allen. And, and uh, I tell you, I think you're going to enjoy this clip because we've had a funny show so far. Precisely like this from Sports Illustrated. I'm Keith Morris of Sports Illustrated, and with me, Neil Allen, the fine relief pitcher of the New York Mets. And uh, Neil, first of all, number 13, you've been wearing that. You're not superstitious, obviously. No, no, I'm not superstitious at all. It's a number that I've carried uh, with me from the time I played Little League uh, sports and baseball and things back home in Kansas. And uh, I've always enjoyed uh, the number 13, and the New York Mets told me that I had to get established before they would actually issue it to anybody. So it took me a few years to get to this point, and they finally gave me the number this year. When you were out there in the mound, uh, what do you do that uh, maybe the crowd isn't aware of? Uh, you've got some idiosyncrasies, I'm sure. Sure. Like before every inning that I go out, I always make the sign of the cross, and I always get down on one knee and scoop dirt into the hole into the pitching mound, and I try to level it out as much as possible. But that's basically the only like uh, thing, the routine that I've had ever since I was a little kid that I do consistently all the time. What goes through your mind out there when you get in trouble on the mound? Oh, God, I got all kinds of things on my mind. If I can get this guy out, I'll be happy. That's the main thing. But uh, I, the basic thing you got to do when you come in as a relief pitcher, uh, generally when I come into a ball game, I got guys staring at me from each base. And uh, so what I have to do is I have to keep the ball low and try and, uh, you know, force a double play of some kind of some nature. Any of your teammates relax you in any way? They don't really relax me. My teammates, I got the respect of all of them. They know that when I come in, I'm going to do the best I possibly can. I'll give them 110%. Off the field, I will never change. Uh, I'm going to go out and give it the best I can every single day. And my, and my teammates accept me off the field as a kind, of a, kind of a clown in a certain sense. And uh, that's the way I'm going to be, and that's the way that my teammates accept me. Around the clubhouse, on the road, and at Shea Stadium and all, uh, I guess you relax a lot there with your teammates then. <laughs> I, I enjoy this game, uh, but the first thing you got to do is you got to learn to relax and, uh, you know, and uh, just carry an everyday attitude with you at the same level tone all the time. Don't take it home with you? That's exactly right. Uh, you're paid here, it's just like an office building, an 8 to 5, only we're paid from like... 7.30 at night until 11.30 at night. What goes on here at this field stays here at the field, but in an aspect also, the people outside the, you know, in the United States are where they can see us at the offices, what it amounts to on television, but we try to just take it home and leave our personal lives uh, at home and leave our baseball life at the park. 
You've been married a little over a year, and uh, what does your wife think about this great game of baseball? <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't no picnic for her. Uh, I mean, you know, we go on the road trips and things like that. It kind of gets hard, and uh, she's very nervous at night uh, around the house out there. It's kind of dark, and uh, but she has adjusted. She's uh, learning, and uh, she's a rookie. She's a rookie wife. How is she in the stands when you're pitching? She don't watch me. As a matter of fact, she broke a television last year because I was doing so bad, she took an ice tray and threw it at the screen. <laughs> And so uh, I had to go and buy a new $1,000 television. So we have a difference right there. I was going to put her on waivers after that one. But, Neil. Uh, we, we, we ironed out that trade, and she got to stay. <laughs> Neil, we wish you the very best. We're in number 13, and thank you. Thank you very much. Take me out to the ball game, right? Joe, he's quite a fellow. And uh, the Mets are doing well this year, which, you know, is... Uh, very pleasing to the people here in the greater New York we area. We need that. We need that. It's Keith Morris. And Miss Mississippi, she was ready to go, but she asked me a question. I said, ask it uh, for the whole countryside there. The question is for Jay Leno. Yes. I'd like to ask, it, do most comedians eventually want to do dramatic parts? I mean, that's a good, profound question, really. Oh, I'm doing Othello next week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess, I mean, yeah, I guess they do, and we try to stop them whenever they can, you know. It's like, <laughs> it's like the Peter principle of show business. As soon as you achieve minor stature in one area, well, I guess I can sing now. There's something, that, the worst part is when you see comedians sing. Please, write to television shows, whatever, do not let comedians sing. They all feel they have to break into song at some point in their career, and right. I, I will. If that ever happens to me, Joe, I want you to step forward and, and stop me. And I would no, I'll encourage you. I go against the grain. Oh, you will, yeah. I guess you do. Keith, what do you want to say? I'd like to know from Miss Mississippi, what would you like to do in the years ahead? I'm first going to finish school. That right. seems like forever. Of course, everyone says it'll pass so fast. But University that, of Mississippi? Yes, sir. University of Southern Mississippi, oh, Hattiesburg, awesome. Golden Eagles. Miss Mississippi and uh, Keith and Jay, I want you to know that this lady, Ann Burstein, uh, has written many captivating novels. This, I don't believe, could be a novel. It's uh, The Rabbi on 47th Street, and I want to tell you, I've seen it in all the windows. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'd like you, you to meet glad. Keith Morris. I'd like you to meet Jay Leno. Hi, how do and you do? Well, hello. <laughs> I read her earlier book, The Rabbi on 46th Street. Right. <laughs> right. Well, in one, one, one communication I got said I had written The Rabbit on 47th Street. It's kind of nice. <laughs> your, dad, your dad was the, uh, the theater rabbit. I mean, the theater, theater rabbi. The <laughs> theater rabbi, yes. Right. He was the uh, rabbi of synagogue called the Actors Temple. Right. And uh, he was orthodox. We had a show business congregation. Did he love show business, though? Adored Did he adored show really? business and adored actors well, and comedians. We specialized in Was he in, in any way theatrical, even though he was a rabbi, would you say, uh, Anne? Well, he was terribly handsome, terribly dapper, really? and I guess he looked like an actor, very much so. And I have a wonderful letter I got recently from Red Buttons. This would interest you. Who won the Academy Award, a comedian who won the Academy Award for acting, right? Did, did he win the Academy Award? In uh, Sayonara. Right. Think, right. He was wonderful. But he, he wrote me this letter about my book and talked about how they always looked forward to my father and this and that. And then he said he was our kind of a rabbi. He had timing. Oh, that's great. Marvelous. That's great. Well, being a rabbi is, 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 is uh, it being in show business, almost, it's almost the same, really. You're, you, if you're a good rabbi you're, or a good minister or anything else, it requires a certain show business flair, dealing with people and well, yes, you funny deal with jokes people and the and whole, you know. You kid around, and, and your timing is important. And timing is important. But that seems to have been the great compliment that you oh, could pay great. somebody. I, yeah. It probably is the greatest compliment a comedian could pay. I think so, yes. I was know. very touched. The actor's it. temple is still there. The building is still there, yes, and it, it, is, it functions, but I don't know too much about it now. I but guess. I read where people like Frank Sinatra go to the Actors Temple, people who are not... Uh, oh, Jewish. they certainly did in my day, too, Who, yes. who went there when, when your dad was the rabbi, besides... Uh, oh, well, Sophie Tucker went there, right. and Eddie Cantor, and Jack Benny, and Smith and Dale, as I say, lots of comedians, Henny Youngman, Milton Berle, uh, anybody, really, who was in show business. What's one favorite memory of your dad? If you had to choose, I mean, this is a marvelous book. The reviews are just, uh, you've heard about the Actors Temple, right? Absolutely, Joe. If, uh, and Jay, you're going to go there and pray for us after the show ends? Yeah, I don't know what's there now. I think I had a hot dog there this morning. So I don't know right. what's there. A hot still dog? A, is it still the Actors Temple? Yes, kosher, kosher. Oh, it still is. It's got to be a kosher, kosher hot dog. Hot dog. Right. <laughs> one, one, one favorite, yeah, continue. One memory of dad. Oh, I, there are so many. I, I think maybe in a funny way, my favorite memory of him is when uh, two of the three Stooges came to the synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, only... the Stooges going in the synagogue. <laughs> no, but there were only two, only two came because only two were Jewish. The other one was, I think, a Catholic. And they came to say a, a memorial prayer for their parents, you know. And my father uh, locked up after them. And I, I will never forget him walking down the street in the dusk, 47th Street, 
with one stooge on one side and one stooge on the other, oh, and my no. father in the middle. It was kind of... Uh, they didn't poke him in the eye or anything. Oh, they were dear, no. Such a touch. It was really touching. Can I ask you something else touching? When did your father die? 1959. Can I ask you another kind of a strange question? Was, it, was his obituary carried in the show business columns of Variety? Oh, yes. Really? Variety, yes. They called him Hep. <laughs> Hep? <laughs> yes. They said Rabbi Burstein was Hep. And they said, well, the, he knew about show business values is what they meant. And, wow. This has to be, uh, Jay, if I'm not available for the part, when it's a movie, you'll... Uh... Sure, I'll be there. Well, I, I was kind of thinking of Robert Redford. Redford, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, no? Keith, Warren what do you want to say about, about, about the rabbi, about the book, about the lady? What's your... Uh, I think question? it's very nice that you've done something like this, and uh, he must have been quite a man. Oh, he was. He was, by the way, also a baseball nut. Was he really? Oh, yes. Oh, my. We used to go to Section 33, which was in the polo grounds. Oh, sure, Remember absolutely. That? And that was a theatrical hangout. Yes, indeed. And yeah. they were all there, um, Ted Lewis and Block and oh, Sully. Oh, my. You want to read a that, warm yeah. and witty book about the theater rabbi. Now, I just want to ask you, be honest, this is an age of honesty. Are you inspired, are you motivated enough to want to go out and read this book? Uh, oh, I sure I am. I think it's really interesting. I think I'd love to get autographed too. Oh, with pleasure. And you give her uh, a ticket I have from yours Mississippi. Too? And you yeah. Right. We'll just I'll have throw in a couple myself. What the hell? Huh? <laughs> Come on, we're living it up. Publisher is the Dial Press. These words, and we're carrying on with more of what is our anniversary show. As we say, good luck to Ann Burstein and this hospital. I mean, this hospitality. Right? <laughs> this hospital. <laughs> and Keith Mars. Be right back. Stay with us. Okay, Jay Leno, I don't think I've ever been to Red Blazer 2, but many of our friends who have been there say we've got to meet a former New York City police captain who left the force to become a jazz musician at Red Blazer 2. His name is Bob Cantwell. And Bob, uh, I don't think I've met many police captains who uh, gave it up. Were you in Homicide as well? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Still killing him. <laughs> this is suicide, right? Yeah. What, uh, in other words, did you go your full 20 years and then retire? Yes, uh, yes, so. I did. I was fortunate. I was able uh, to leave, uh, you know, at the right time, but it uh, became more and more of a conflict. They weren't too pleased uh, with what I was doing. I was doing it a few years before I got out, and uh, eventually it, the pressure got to me, you might say, you know. It, it was hard to uh, concentrate on both professions at one time. I want you to meet a few of my friends here today, starting with Jay Leno. Jay, what goes through your mind Jay? Uh, alongside the uh, former... Uh... Well, I'd like to lie down on the floor and see if you could make one of those chalk things around me. I really <laughs> it would be my pleasure. I all think that would be neat to have my picture done by a... <laughs> what, what, uh, what about the band? Who's in the band? Let's make some friends for the band. Well, I, I th we have a terrific old drummer named Freddie Moore. He's 82 years old. And he played with uh, some of the original jazz greats. He was with King Oliver in 1929 here in New York and uh, spent quite a few years with Sidney Bechet. And we're really pleased to have him. He's so fantastic guy. You don't have anybody you met on the job. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, my piano player is also an ex-cop. Bob Smith, his name is. And, uh, he's a terrific jazz musician. We feel secure in there with yeah. these people around us, right? We got the place covered, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Bob Cantwell who will invite us in. I have been told there is a marvelous. Uh, now you got to uh, you got to tell us Anne Borchard, as in Orchard, right? Did I say yes, yes. This very charming lady is getting good reviews for the Francis Farmer story. Now there's a lady that uh, I've read about her. She had a lot of personal tragedy, a lot of oh, sadness in God. her life. Yes. yes. You got to tell the uninitiated who was Francis Farmer and why the story. Okay. Uh, Francis Farmer was a Hollywood star in late 30s to 40s and had a very tragic life and her career started out very good but she had a lot of personal problems that just kind of uh, mushroom snowball yeah mr sebastian stewart is the playwright right yes and it's sir called the francis farmer story what got you involved in in this particular project well i'd known a little about her life and i read up on it and it really was an extraordinary life joe she starred opposite cary grant tyrone power blonde beautiful lady be right. beautiful Woman, she came to New York. She starred on, in Broadway, on uh, in Golden Boy with Clifford Odets. Would you say she was bent on self-destruction, as they sometimes say? About uh... I think it was a combination a of her personality bit. and circumstances. Clifford Odets, she had a disastrous love affair with him. He uh, yeah. was extremely cruel to her, and he actually broke her spirit in a certain way. Jay, you talk about legends, and we're serious now. Francis Farmer, uh, there, there's a book on her life called Shadowland. 
there There's is two books. Two books. Yes. Was she with the Morris office? <laughs> Possibly. I mean, that could have a lot to do could, with it. It could put you down, right. Do you think that some of these ladies have a fear of growing old gracefully, the way Marilyn Monroe had that fear, or they just, they, just, they were afraid of the advancing years? Could that, could that have been part of it, maybe, Sebastian? I don't know. I don't think that I, was so no. much Frances's uh, no. problem. I think she was she extremely... She was a very headstrong person, very compulsive. and mm -hmm. uh, She really, she didn't care about uh, Hollywood uh, as far as... Um, keeping in line. And exactly. She pretty she much did what she wanted to do. Is there a lesson in the play and anything we can learn from that play? Even subtly, can we benefit in any way from seeing the uh, <laughs> Francis Farmer's play? Well, keep you cool. Keep your head on straight. And, uh, don't take drugs. Don't take drugs. Yeah, don't drink. Is it, is, it, uh, just a, is it like a few days in her life or is it a whole... I mean, it's her whole life. Oh, I see. Well, that's yeah. She also, there was a very big political factor going on in her life. She uh, earned over a million dollars in her career. When she was uh, institutionalized, she was destitute because she'd given every penny away to causes wow. that she believed in, like the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, the farm workers, the group theater. Sebastian, had Frances Farmer lived, as, as they say, had she taken better care of herself, I mean, what, what, how old would she be and what might she be doing today? She was today? born in 1914, so she would be 68. Right. And I think if she had had a little better luck, she would still be cooking as an actress because she was one heck of an actress, Joe. We saw her at the Thalia right. about a month ago in Come and Get It and with Walter Brennan, and she was marvelous, right. and it's a great show. And your beginnings your in. beginnings, and uh, were they anything like the beginnings of uh, Francis Farmer? Were they meteoric or anything <laughs> on your beginnings in this, in this crazy business? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Not really? <laughs> Anne is a wonderful actress, Joe, and I hope people will come down and see her. She's really a star. And she's right. given a hell of a performance. What do you think, Jay? You think we should make it very efficient? Yeah, I think this sounds great, because I love these kind of stories, you know. I mean, it's, uh, it's fascinating when it's a real person, and there are still people in Hollywood and in New York that, are, that know her and are involved with yeah. her. You know, I, I would love to see it. I will come down and see it. There it are. Terrific. We've, it we've, I've terrific. met so many people since I began working on it who knew Frances, who, who gave me additional insights into her. And we've got a terrific cast. Can I quickly name them, Joe? Sure. Just five. It's got Penny Rockwell, Mary Lou Whitmer, Chris Tanner, John Giler, and Richard Spohr, and Miss Borchard. And they're really working out down there. And if you like good theater, I, I'd say come on down and see it, and you won't be disappointed. Like it's only see, four bucks. I'd like to see more of Ann Borchard, and we're seeing a lot of her you now. see a that. lot of her, and she's right. a beautiful woman. And she wears a very skimpy gown and some wonderful, wild, incredible things And what's the name of the theater? Was show tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what's the address, Ann? Uh, it's Recherche, which is 94 St. Mark's. And Mr. Cantwell, I want to tell you that I, I can visualize you in uh, in the uniform, but uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you packed it in, right, uh, Jay? Uh, like sure. You, uh, invite us in and let's make some friends for the band. Please come up and see me at the Red Blazer. I'd love to see you. Would you come Thank down you. here one day? You don't have a record or a tape with you today, do you? No, I don't happen to have one. Uh, what's the sound of the, the Dixieland? Dixieland. Dixieland the, jazz. If Sandy. we were to get a ticket in front of the Red Blazer, <laughs> any chance? Uh, no problem. No problem. Well, some, I'll be there. Okay. Got some young people who want to meet uh, Jay Leno. We will be down. One more time, the name of the theater. I don't know that theater. It's Ray Cherche, 94 St. Mark's. You can call 254-7562 for reservations. the address of the Red Blazer? <laughs> is, uh, Red Blazer is uh, 88th Street and 3rd Avenue. And the address of Dangerfields, you can't miss it. Just look for... Uh... Uh, I'm going to be at her place. No, uh, Dangerfields <laughs> is uh, 118, 1st Avenue. These words that are with a cavalcade of young comedians who want to chat with Jay, and I want you to meet them too. Everyone is brilliant. Don't ever leave us. So, my right-hand man is uh, back in the Big Apple. His name is Jay Leno, and... Uh, Jay, I want to meet a couple of people. I, I don't know if they wanted to come on the edge today, but they're fans of David Fry, and they came down to say hello, and uh, I wanted to say hello to the whole world. Joe Hardy on the end over there is a fine actor and is Hi, big plays in How are you? Detective How are you? Story. Yeah, with Ralph Bellamy. And, and, but he does, he does impressions. One day we're gonna, uh, is one of your specialties uh, Frederick March? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, yeah. We're going to do it, uh, when are we going to do it, Joe? Anytime you're Next in Next time, huh? You want to give us a sample? You want to give us a... Uh, I beg your pardon, Dr. Lanyon. You know what I come for. Dr. Jekyll sent me a package. It's important. Is it here? <laughs> Will you let me take this glass and leave without further question? <laughs> Think before you decide, I tell you. Do you want to stay as you are, or you want your eyes and your soul to be blasted by a sight that would stagger the devil himself? I didn't know if he wanted to work today, but he wanted to work, right? <laughs> That's Joe Hardy, who is a very busy Broadway actor. Now, another David Fry groupie is Tony Morano, who has his own show in Boston. 
Tony Miranda, I don't know if you want to do anything today. Would you give us one voice? I'd like to do uh, Edward G. Robinson. Love it, love it, love it. Now, you mugs listen to me, Sam. <laughs> now, there's nobody, but nobody tells me what to do. It looks like him, too. If I say you go with me, you go with me, Sam. As far as the girls, they stay in the car. <laughs> is it understood? Young well, and contemporary fine. is Gregory, that's uh, Tony Moreno, Gregory Fleeman. Uh, Jay is getting big publicity. He made his big name with the Manhattan Transfer, and now he's appearing on his own as Gregory Fleeman and the Flea Women at Snafu. <laughs> yeah. Well, Snafu true. stands for Situation Normal All Fouled Up. Right? That's uh, one way of putting it. It's, uh... <laughs> You want to give? Are you in the mood for a sample? A, well, I could, I could sing a little tune acoustically if you'd like. I would love it. This man has a huge new following. Have you well, heard the name yet? Uh, yes, I have. Yes, I and, have. Uh, David Fry oh. tells me he is also a fan of Gregory Fleeman. Uh, Snafu is located where? Uh, Snafu is at Twenty First and Sixth. And here's a sample. Which camera are we on? There we go. <laughs> this is uh, the Skin Tango. Skin Tango. <laughs> My skin, oh, how it surrounds me. It simply astounds me. It's all around me. My skin, through all kinds of weather, it holds me together It's all over me Oh, I can't take myself lightly Oh, it's so easy to see I have bulges unsightly, but they're hidden away deep down inside of me. <laughs> Gregory Freeman, and we shall return. Stay with us, please. As a matter of fact, uh, I think that's it, so I can only tell you that uh, this has been for me an hour of hours. Dean Turner is making a movie. Name the movie. Night of the Real Dead People. Night of the Real Dead People. Yes. And he's an impressionist. And I was doing impress. Come here, good humor. Good humor. I want you. We got lunch and lunch. I don't know if they want to come on today. Good humor. This man does a great. How would Joe Franklin sign off the show? Uh, this is Joe Franklin here for Martin Paint. And remember, stay tuned for more fun with Joe where, Franklin. Where do we catch Good Humor Decks anyway? Uh, good humor at uh, June 27th. The Charter House in New Jersey. It's a good, it's a good group. It's a good group. And uh, bring down the whole group and do some improv with us one day. And Snafu located at uh, 21st and 6th. And now we'll stay here and do impressions for a few weeks, okay? Have a good day and a good night and stay happy and stay well.